What's going on guys, welcome back to a brand new video and a little bit over six hours worth of gameplay cut down into about half an hour and this is a full UFC 1 career. My intention was to go from Ulmer Fighter to World Champ. I had no intentions of going unbeaten, getting all knockouts, getting all subs, just want to just play the game through and become World Champion again. So let's see how it goes. One thing to remember with this game before we get in is you cannot regen stamina and block at the same time. So you will see me and the AI drop our hands a lot. So that's why. So as you can see, we are making Andrew Young. Normally we go by the king uh, for Andrew Young. He's like one of my all-time classic creative fighters from NBA to Madden to UFC to Fight Night. But they didn't have the king, so I've gone with Pretty Boy. Uh, I've gone with an MMA style because I wanted good kicks, good KO power in the hand, decent submissions, decent ground and pound, like kind of, you know, jack of all trades really. Went with the welterweight division here and fighting out of London. So the character creation was pretty simple. Just want to make someone look okay. Uh, you know, obviously kept adding tattoos throughout the career. And for this game, you actually get to choose your own shorts based on sponsors and stuff. Uh, I didn't change my shorts too much, but this was really, really fun, guys. I, I generally enjoyed this career so much. Uh, it was fun to make this video as well, record for all that time, and somehow cut down all these fights into one half an hour video. So let's jump into it. Come on in, guys. Tomorrow, the elimination fights. You know how hard it was for you to get here. Give it everything you've got. Leave everything inside that octagon. You do not want to be the guy riding home on the bus tomorrow. Good luck, gentlemen. So we start with the first fight after we had that little speech from Dana and I'm just getting used to the controls at this point. The, the computer is just powering the absolute shit at me. So what it is for this fight is you've got your, your first fight in the armor fighter, then you have your picks and then you have your second, third, fourth and then your finals eventually after that. Uh, so this was actually a, a, a pretty tough fight for our first one. Obviously they do it based on how quick the fight is finished, but we had a pretty pretty confident fight as you see as I'm cutting through. You know, there's there's not really he parried a good amount, but in this clinch I'm absolutely dominating this man in the clinch. He doesn't stand a chance. Uh, I tried to work a lot of leg kicks, but I had this horrible oblique that really limited my range. I do end up changing that later in the career. Got a nice head kick as well. Uh, you know, real kind of like I said, you know, MMA is a slow start when you go for this this calf. But it's a good finish, like he, he, he start, he ends well, you know, really good overall, really good everywhere. And we win on point, which I'm pretty happy with. Uh, it was good to go the distance for our first fight. And then we have the picks here. I honestly thought I was going to be top six. I felt like I was going to go number five, but unfortunately I didn't. They just didn't seem bothered in me after that decision, uh, which was a little bit disappointing. But I went 12th, so, you know, that is what it is. I just have to prove people wrong. We got into our second fight, prop first ultimate fighter fight here. Once we've actually been drafted in the uh, in, in the top twelve, and you know this at this point I was like I want to prove that you know you you can't sleep on on these hands. You know I started to throw a lot more combinations, good shots everywhere, perfect lead hook there, drops him down, land that ground and pound. He's already out, and the ref has to wave it off. Good victory there, and that pushes us into the third fight of the ultimate fighter. And while I'm not always going to have tons to say, I mean, that was a fantastic head kick. Oh, followed by the two hooks to the drop, the ground and pound. Lay down some ground and pound here, but decide that, you know, ground and pound is not always the way. I didn't want to waste my stamina here. I just want to hurt this guy and, uh, you know, eventually get round to taking him down. And we get him to the ground here, take his back, go for this rear naked choke, and we do end up sinking it in. So we get a submission. So we've shown that in three fights, we've gone the, the distance, got a knockout, and now got a submission after dropping this guy. So, you know, we've shown that we that we are a very versatile fight already. And it was at this point I was like, this is gonna be a good career. Like I'm really having fun here. And then we go into the fourth fight, so we're now one fight away from the finals. And just the fight just starts off an absolute slugger. The one thing I remember about this fight is I don't know if I I, I don't think I'll show it because it was a bit of a, an odd clip. But I actually got hurt in this fight with a head kick, but was able to recover quite well. Land some nice ground and pound here. Uh, but you know. We weren't prone to getting hurt, but the thing is with this career is because of how many fights I did get in, I didn't want to show the every single time I was hurt, every single exchange. Perfect uppercut though, one punch knockout. But I didn't want to show every single exchange every time I was hurt because the video would be way too long. To extend here into the finals, 
And finally, we have a proper fight offer. Proper, you, all these videos pop up. I'm not going to show you guys them all because, you know, there's so many that pop up throughout the video. Honestly, if I show you guys everything, hey, you are looking at hours of footage. Out. This should be a great fight. You better bring your A game. We get a proper fight off at Earl Burke, and as you can see, we're now proper in the UFC venue. Exciting stuff. Proper, proper event here. He's landed some good shots off the start. Our jab was a, a real good key throughout this. Uh, jab <laughs> taunting him there. Jab and leg kicks. Nasty bit of ground and pound. Hammer fists are just, oh god, you got to love a hammer fist, eh? Stuff that. To be honest, the ground game was where I kind of strived a lot of the time. Um, I, th I thrived on the ground early in my in early in our career because it was just I was able to dominate just so well, just not do you know keep it simple, not 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 be fancy with it. I'm landing nasty combinations here. Oh, the front kick followed up by the ground. He's already out at this point, but the ref has to call it. And there we are, guys, the ultimate fighter finale welterweight winner. Ultimate Fighter. So at this point, we're technically 1-0 already. I mean, the people we fought in the Ultimate Fight were like 7-0, 6-1, 5-2. So we're, we're at this point, we're, we're actually 1-0 now. So this is our, our official UFC debut, I suppose you could call it, um, which we, we really utilized. You'll see a lot of this spinning kick to the body. It was such a good tool. I do end up having a side front kick, which is really nice to the body as well, which I use quite a bit throughout this um throughout this career and you'll see a lot of the time we do extend into the second round perhaps the third round it's i, I didn't want to have it so it was just that i was going to be knocking everyone out in the first round because that's just that, that doesn't make for good tv As you can see, we're up against, uh, you know, we're, we're, this is our first opponent and we're already in the third round. We're not, I mean, I, I was struggling against this guy. I was trying to land some good leg kicks. I felt kind of exhausted here, as you can see, my stamina. I'm not, I kept forgetting about that stamina that you can't be blocking and, and recover, which is one thing I just hated about this game. I absolutely despised it. But you can see his head is hurt, but my body and head is, is a little bit red as well. Nice head kick there, but still didn't drop him. He went for that side kick. Stuffed the takedown. Not everything goes my way, really, in this career. But at this point, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I've won this fight already based on just pure strokes. You can see the volume that I'm putting in here. He takes me down again, and I'm able to flip it round on him here and lay down that ground and pound. But we're 30 seconds away from going to decision, and I didn't really want to go to decision in my UFC debut, but if it happens, it happens at the end of the day. It's just one of those things you just have to suck up. Uh, but, you know, it was something that I didn't want to happen, <laughs> so I made sure it didn't happen by knocking that bitch out. Second fight, we end up just locking in this really easy Kimura. Uh, I just took him down. He was a kickboxer. took him down, locked in a Kimura. Easy money, light work. Wasn't much of a stress, to be honest. Third fight, this guy was tiny. This made us look like the biggest welterweight ever. When you see people like this, you think, how the fuck are we all the same weight? Absolutely ridiculous, honestly. I don't, I don't know how we're the same weight. But I saw this guy and I thought, this is absolute light work. This, this tiny little man with this mustache. Like, this is a joke fight, you know what I mean? But uh, he ended up going for the submission at the end of the first round. And we end up being saved by the bell here. Uh, so, can't complain too much at that. But, you know, luckily, luckily he didn't sink in that armbar. He very well might have, to be honest. But, luckily he didn't. So, we, you know, we were okay. But, going into the second round, I'd been winning the fight for the most part. So, I ended up giving him a taste of his own medicine and locking in my own armbar. Next fight, we've got the guy on the ground just dominating him here. You can see, I mean, we're only halfway into the first round and we'd beat the shit out of him. We had dropped him and we'd gone to the next fight here. 
Uh, you know, these guys, we, we had a good mix for the start of our career. A lot of kickboxers, few ground experts, you can see, trying to keep it on the feet here. Trying to just bully this guy's body, something major. Lots of knees to the body. He's just leaving himself open, throwing in that same hook all the time. So I'm just sinking in those knees to the body. Nasty shots there. But he carries on fighting, but the spinning kick seizes him up. My boy... Fucking, my, my God, he went stiff there. It was brutal. And give us that strap. We're like 5-0 and we're already asking for the strap. Now we've got another tough fight on our hands here. I don't know what happened. This was the only fight where this happened. You'll see when I'm moving forward with the jab, the, the screen kind of goes fuzzy. The only fight this happened, I don't know. It was just It's just UFC 1, though. What can you expect, to be honest? But he's landing some nasty shots. My body was getting pieced up, but out striking him. Landing those leg kicks like absolute friggin' charm. Coming towards the end of the first round. I mean, we're just going back and forth with these kicks. I'm utilizing my kicks a lot more. I'm, but fuck me, I get dropped there, what the fuck, oh my god, I get dropped with a nasty body kick, but I jump right back up, but that's when I realised, I was like, you, you know, I can't be fighting on an empty gas tank, you know what I mean, uh, into the second round, his leg is a bit fucked, and that's kind of what I was going for there, I was just trying to just torch his leg up, just, you know, hurt him as much as possible, I had a feeling this guy was going to be tough in the first round when he wasn't affected by my, many of my strikes, so I knew I was just going to have to utilise body kicks, leg kicks, the jab, the straights, and that's what I was doing. I mean, at this point, you can see my stamina is fucked. His is pretty decent coming to the end of this second round. But, you know, I just got to stick to what I know, not, not miss as many shots as I've been missing through that first round. And, yeah, lots of jab straights, lots of leg kicks. And that's what we've been landing. Halfway into this third round, he does keep switching stance, which is why I can't seem to get his leg, like, actually injured. Uh, throughout like the game, obviously throughout the round, he's switching stunts while I'm struggling, he's checking my kicks, he ends up getting off me for some reason, he does get me down to the ground, but I'm pretty sure I've done enough to win, but let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. Judge one scores the contest, 30-27, young. Judge two scores it, 28-28. And judge three scores it, 30-27, Majority decision, yeah! Pretty Boy earns the win by majority decision. So after a majority decision win, I was feeling like, all right, I need to get in there. I need to put on a show. Um, you know, it's, that's my time now. So we ended up knocking this guy out in the first round with some nasty ground and pound. But that was a majority decision that fight. I couldn't believe that. This guy just got pieced up against the cage. I was putting the fucking work on him. I was on a mission to prove that, you know, I, 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 I'm I not a points fighter. I know I've only gone to decision once in my UFC career, but I wasn't a fan on it. So I was ready to put this guy down. Absolutely pr nothing but pressure against the cage. I'm taunting him. I'm landing kicks. I'm landing uppercuts. Absolutely slumped that boy. What's he? Hold up. What's he doing in that position? We're going to the next fight. Absolutely torching this guy's body. You can see it. Oh my god. That combination was nasty. That's another victory under our belts. Couple of subs in a row after a tough fought decision. Then we lock in this armbar to show that we are still versatile. We're not just this knockout artist. And we and this is our first fight on the main card. We're on a uh, Uriah Faber Henan Burrell card against a pretty tough opponent. But I was ready for this. I, I you know they said this was going to be my toughest challenge, but he just let me bully him against the cage all night. Some fighters didn't. Some fighters were able to parry off and, and do what they want. But I believe this guy was a submission specialist. So I was like, I'm not gonna try and battle him in his guard. I'm only going to be in top mount if I if I can. So once he started to transition, I was like, I'm just going to get up. This is not a fight I want um, against this guy on the ground. But he was determined to fight me. You can see his body, his head is fucked. He is a mess. And the body shot followed by the uppercut put him down in the second round. And then another easy fight here. This one was just an absolute joke. He went for the takedown, caught him with the uppercut, followed up with the combination. Absolute light work in 51 seconds. I mean, what do you expect? Another body shot fucking fiasco there. Absolutely lit him up. Sunk in that rear naked choke. Another good victory there early in the fight. Back up, 
As you can see at this point, I've got this guy, in, I had this guy in a sprawl and his body is just absolutely buggered. Uh, he did actually reverse the transition, but I was able to get up at the end of the first round. Didn't want to do too much. Going to the second round, this was a pretty competitive fight, to be honest. Like, I was torching up his body pretty nice, but he was always doing something until that point. <laughs> Perfect body shot. I was just working it throughout the first round. Knew I could get him. That teep to the head was a bit unnecessary, but it felt good to do it. Oh, my God. The jab straight combination. Oh, that was one of my favorite combinations to finish out the first round. Just perfect perfect end to get a first round KO. Then we have a tough customer here, guys. We have Matt Brown, our first big name. You know, this was like the toughest fight of our career. He knew how to parry. He knew how to fight. I knew I wanted to work the body, work the legs, try and get his stamina down. But he was a tough customer, a bit tougher than we thought. The first round I had his body a bit hurt and I thought I've got him here. But he was just so resilient and he, yeah, he started to really fight back, land some good knees for us. Going to the second round, I was pretty confident I'd won the first round if I'm honest. Uh, I hadn't dropped him or nothing. He had parried a lot, land some good counters. But I felt like my pure volume was, was far better than his. As you can see, I've got his head pretty hurt in this second round. But he's landed good head kicks. That stumbled me bad. Nice spinning kick that he walked straight into but didn't seem to hurt him. Didn't obviously have the best kick power there, clearly. But in the clinch, he tries to get in the clinch, but I'm able to reverse that and break it. As you can see, at this point, we're in round three. We've got one knockdown. I knocked him down in the um, second round, but he just got straight back up. I don't want to show you guys all, like, the knockdowns and stuff. I just kind of want to show you snippets from each fight. I feel like that's a funner style to do things. At this point, I'm trying to swing when I've got no stamina. He's got no stamina. I'm trying to utilize his lack of stamina, but... He's just landing kick after kick after kick. And I've got to be careful, man. He's, he's, he's going to be able to knock me out. But he wasn't. Perfect combination there. Finish with the uppercut. Lovely finish to Matt Brown. Then we get an easy win. A second round submission here with the armbar. Love the armbar with this, this fight with Andrew Young. Sinking the armbar is just brilliant. Another good win. And then we get a rematch with Matt Brown. He wants to rematch us. Obviously felt like he was cheated. This time I was like, I'm not going to let him off. I'm just going to absolutely bully him. I know how he fights now. I know what I can do. I know that it's not worth going for the legs, attacking the legs because he parries that shit. Uh, got him hurt in the first round here. Series of hooks. Just bullied him against the cage. Lands some ground and pound. And obviously Matt Brown never wanted a piece of me again. We got up against Reginald. <laughs> I think his name is actually Regan Horn. A pretty easy fight. Another one that just wanted to back up the whole time. Sometimes we had fighters meet us in the middle. Sometimes we had fighters trying to parry and counter punch us. Because I'm mixing it up the way I'm throwing my shots. The way I'm mixing it up to the body. Some fighters had a hard time. Another opponent down and out in the first round. And then we get the offer for BJ Penn, Submission Specialist. And this is when I was like, all right, not going to the ground with BJ Penn. I'm, I'm prepared to attack the body, to work the leg kicks. But BJ's got incredible stand-up from Undisputed Series to pretty sure this game. BJ Penn had just freaky good stand-up. Obviously, his ground game was phenomenal, but his stand-up is no joke. Good end to the first round. As you can see, I've actually cut him. So I was feeling pretty good about myself. I have hurt his body as well. And I was feeling good, man. Honestly, I was feeling really good coming into this fight. You know, we're halfway into the second round. He's landed some good shots. That head kick and that leg kick is, is bothering me all night. But I was able to do a few things. You can see I've got his body hurt at this point. He's obviously now trying to focus on getting that stamina back, so which, I'm, which I know. So I'm just constantly working that body. And you'll see the front, the front kind of side kick does come to use there. Pushing him back. Nasty hook. Body shot again. Check that leg kick and then that, that body kick again that I'm landing, sorry. The knee to the body, the spin to the body, and out we go. Lovely win against a very, very tough opponent in BJ Pym. And then we get Damian Meyer. Now, this is the only fight you will see the fight stats afterwards. This man would not stop shooting for takedowns. He kept getting them because I was trying to go for the uppercut. He just, there you go, I stuffed that one. I knew at this point, fuck it. I'm going to I'm gonna get, let him, he took me down. I was like, all right, instead of getting up, I'm just going to do this. Reverse the transition, land the hammer punches, knock him out. Don't keep fucking trying to take me down. Have you got a guess of how many? 19 takedown attempts in three and a half minutes. Then we fight Pascal Krause, which is another big name for us uh, at this point in, in, the, in the UFC landscape. I think he was like number 10 ranked or something. So it's pretty good. I end up unlocking an uh, elbow, which you can see I land there, which is lovely. 
and then bang, that kick, absolutely perfect. That elbow is vicious. Then we get Jake Ellenberger. Now, this was one of my toughest fights to date. Honestly, I thought this was going to be easy after beating BJ Penn and after beating Matt Brown twice, I thought Jake Ellenberger is going to be light work. So on the first round, I do put it on him quite a bit. But man, he, he, he didn't care. He did not care one iota. He was just happy to back up. He landed some really good counters. My body was getting hurt in this fight. And yeah, man, I said to be careful. At this point, I was like, I've got to be careful. But then I started to be careful when he started to get shit like this done. He started to get takedowns. He started to land shots on me. He started to hurt my body on the stand-up. So I was trying to find this fine line between being careful while not letting him get off too much. Second round's done. Definitely a close fight so far, but I feel like I was up. Uh, and I was like, at this point, I didn't want to risk it, so I needed to get him out. That was my goal here at, at towards the end of this fight was I need to get him out of here. need to finish him. At this point, we've got a minute left. My head is fucked. Like, he's started to really hurt me here. I'm just on the retreat at this point, trying to land some body kicks to push him Ladies back. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. The judges score this contest 29-28. 30-27 and 30-27. Declaring the winner by unanimous decision. Yeah! Pretty boy earns the win by unanimous decision. So we end up getting that unanimous victory over Jake Ellenberger. Then we get Rory McDonald, who is a ground and pound specialist. And you can see he is quick. But we have one one thing that I'm going to try, and that is the body shot. He's not letting me land many leg kicks. I'm not able to parry much. Just boof, boof. Okay, done a little bit of damage. I was like, okay, maybe I can try and torch up some combinations. He weaved into it. He sidestepped into the body shot, which put Rory down in one round. And here it is, guys. The title shot. Mike Pyle, the toughest fight of our career yet. The champion. Fuck knows how Mike Pyle is the champion. I may never know. But this is bound to be the toughest fight of our career. I mean, three leg kicks in. His legs are already a bit fucked. He's backing up against the cage here. Not quite sure what that is. I've already forced him to switch stance. So he's already out of his natural, which was my, my tactic a lot throughout this career. Force them to switch stance and they're out of their natural what feels comfortable. Then I can just light him up. He's hurt already. He's uh, This is unbelievable. This is supposed to be a title fight. This is a world champion. And he's out already. Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mario Yamasaki has called a stop for this contest at 47 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by knockout and new UFC welterweight champion of the world. Yeah! Pretty Boy is the new UFC welterweight champion. So at this point, I'm 26-0, and I decided I'm either going to go for 30-0 to beat Habib's record, or I'll retire when I lose. This first fight, Winston Rand, I was expecting like my title defences to be pretty good. I got the Venom shorts on as well, but this fight ended up being a brawl from hell. That first round was a back and forth. We were taking chunks out of each other. Honestly, it was unbelievable. I, I couldn't believe how that fight was going, but... I knew in the stand-up I had the upper hand, and I knew that I could hurt him more than he could hurt me. So as you can see, I'm just trying to land that big that big swing and shot, and that's just not doing much. That is not doing much. So I'm like, all right, I've got to go back to what I know, because he is piecing me up here right now. I'm struggling to land shots on this man. This was a f this was probably one of the most nerve-wracking fights I'd have until that point where I caught him with those shots, and down he goes. So at this point... I'm 27 and 0, locking a lovely arm triangle here against um, Tarak Saradin. I think that's how you pronounce his name. At this point, I'm 28 and 0, guys, and I, I'm not going to lie, I was feeling nervous because I didn't plan on going undefeated. So I was like, win or lose, this is this is it. This is to tie Khabib's record against Gunnar Nelson, who's a very good stand-up fighter, brilliant jiu-jitsu. But throughout this fight first minute I was locking up his body he was trying to clinch with me but every time he did I was able to reverse it and just knee to the body sink a few and look at that what a what a, what a perfect combination to get him down and he's out just like that two minutes in so at this point we are 29 and 0 the 30th fight to beat Habib's record this means something it's a super fight against number one contender Luke Rockhold up in the middleweight division 
Now, of course, I could have gone on to probably win the middleweight strap in the future, which at this point was Chris Weidman's. Probably could have gone on to maybe lose a fight in the future. I could have gone on to have 10, 15, 20 title defences. Who knows? But this was going to be my final fight. Win or lose, I was either going to retire 21-1 and 1 or 30-0. and 0. And I tell you what, this fight is probably the only fight I regret taking, guys. I'm not going to lie. Luke Rockhold, everything he hit me with hurt. He knew how to do damage. I was spending too much time on the leg kicks. I was worried about losing at this point because I had spent a lot of time on the leg kicks, whereas he had spent a lot of time just hurting me with his, his simpler shots. He wasn't even throwing as often as I was, but he was hurting me more. End up dropping him there with some kind of weird uppercut leg kick thing that landed. But then I noticed coming towards the end of the second round and entering the third, his body, his head, and both his legs are actually hurt. So now I feel like I've got a good chance here. And, you know, he's putting singular shots out to the world. I'm, I know I've got to put combinations together out. That's, that's the difference between the way we're fighting here. He's the stronger man. He's the heavier man. But I knew I had to just sink shots. You know, he's a natural middleweight. I'm not. I've bulked up for this. Two minutes in, two minutes left in the third round. And at this point, I'm like, I've just got to do something. I've, got, I've just got to put more combinations together. If he's on the ground, I've got to bully him on the ground. I cannot let him just get up and, and do what he wants. This was a tough fight, man. He definitely hit harder than I thought he would. Nice body shot there. He goes for that elbow. He cracks me with the elbow, followed by the uppercut. Lucky I didn't get more stunned than I already was there. But at this point, I feel like he was getting tired. Uh, both our short-term stamina was pretty shit, really, especially as it was a five-round main event. But, you know, it is what it is. It's just one of those fights where it was tougher than I expected. Third round was getting hurt. I was getting tagged. My stamina was low. Uh, but his body, his leg, and his head was hurt. And so I felt like I had a good chance. Let's get him with that one. He goes for that. Bang the kick. And out he goes. I'm going to follow up with the ground and pound just in case the ref doesn't want to rend it. And there we go, guys. The tail of Andrew Young. He retired at the end of this fight. 30 and 0, which I cannot believe, honestly. Look at that. 30 and 0. So many contenders they didn't get us to fight. Carlos Condit, GSP, Nick Diaz, which I was a bit gutted about, really. Um, obviously, then Luke Rockhold was pushed down to number three, but he had a record of 15 and 12, so it's not like that was exactly a great fight. Look through the career stats here 22 wins by knockout or TKO, six wins by submission, and two wins by decision, which I have never had before. And what's even funnier, never have I ever. Had a UFC career where I go undefeated for the first 30 wins. Never. And this one I was like, you know what? Win or lose, I'll accept it. And all I want to do is go from ultimate fighter to world champ. I've had careers where I've I've been lo knocked, lost by flash knockouts. But I just think the way I fought this, the MMA version, the submissions, the ground and pound was brilliant. We won one fight of the night. We won three knockouts of the night and four submissions of the night. Only winning one submission of the year. Becoming ultimate fighter and world champ with four defences. Of course, Andrew Young does warrant a lot of questions of, you know, how would he have done against GSP? How would he have done against Diaz? But those questions will never be answered. Unless this video hits, I don't, the reason I'm going to say this is because I don't want, I don't think I'll ever go back to this career. If this video hits 500 likes, then I'll bring Andrew Young back to defend his title like 10 more times. But I know that won't happen. <laughs> That's the reason. Because some people, will start, I get comments of people say, oh, bring him back for, to fight GSP or whatever. Because GSP was going to be the next title defense. Um, and I, I've actually deleted UFC 1 off my um, <laughs> off my console, so I'd have to re-download it. Here are my attributes. I'm 97 overall, 100 ground, 100 submission, 97 blocker, now 98 overall after leveling these up. And what's funny, I never done the training. I only ever used the points, the evolution points I got from the fights. That just shows how easy it is to level up on this game. But it was a great career. Andrew Young, 30 0, which I just cannot believe that he retired at 30 0. That's unbelievable. Gr you know, Ulmer Fighter, tough fight against the likes of Jake Ellenberger to go the distance. A fight where I won by majority to fights knocking out the champion in less than 60 seconds. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. Drop a like if you have, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.